bit of a drive to do today. It's Sunday, and a friend of the family is in ICU as of yesterday. He's got a country home about 40 minutes from me, so I told him I would help take care of his dog, letting him in and out until his daughter got back from the beach. So got a little bit of time today, and I just figure I would do kind of a little video rambling around. I've kind of made some notes real quick. You'll see by the title, eBay is dead. At least that's what everybody keeps saying. <laughs> I started wondering about that when I was at a yard sale a couple of days ago. And I was coming back and I saw the vehicle that you'll see in the thumbnail. And this guy was absolutely a one-man show. If he had been a band, he would have been one of those walking bands, you know, where you've got the cymbals and everything playing. His car didn't have a car wrap. He had it actually painted right on the car, but he had all of these things that he offers. Movie producer. He rents out mascots, costumes, and mascots. He does carpenter work. Down the side, it said that he was available for house cleaning. Down the other side, it said that he was available for babysitting, or he could haul people to their doctor's appointments, and just on and on and on and on, all kinds of stuff. It was just, it was rather humorous seeing this. He had a pallet on the top of the car, and I'm like, I don't know what that was for, but maybe he was hauling it to the pallet yard and getting five bucks for it. it maybe start thinking about it and about how often that we say whatever our current gig is, whether it's eBay or whether it's Etsy or whatever it is, if it goes a little dry for a while, which is natural, we start thinking it's dead. And worse than that, we start treating it like it's dead. And we might think that we're listing as much as we used to or the, the type of things that we used to, but maybe we're not. Or maybe we're putting our attention into other things instead of into eBay and instead of into Etsy or Poshmark, Macari, Facebook Marketplace, whatever our main hustle is. And I started thinking about that car and I thought, you know, I guess I'm just more like that car. I'm more like that guy. I have always been somebody that had a lot in the pipeline. You know, I've been a business coach over the years in different industries. I've owned a multitude of businesses and some of them longer than others, but most of those overlapped. Most of my jobs overlapped. I started out, you know, working when I was nine years old, basically. I mean, just like every other young girl, we'd start babysitting. And I started babysitting for singles in a single moms and people that was in our church or our family, you know, that type of thing. And from 
actual real job, paying job, was in a bakery. I started when I was 15. I turned shortly after that. I turned 16. And I did the same thing there. I was hired as a clerk, but I wanted to learn how to decorate the cake. So I would do the basic things like the roses and things like that. I wanted to learn how to do that because that was something that kept my job fresh for me. But it also showed them that I wanted to learn how to do these other things. I would I would make things happen. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, if a cute little 17-year-old boy walked through the door, I probably didn't even remember that I was at work. <laughs> I probably spent a little time with my friends and things like that. But I did stay busy. I always had a cleaning cloth in my hand. I always was looking for something to do. And I've been told, even now, I'm 59 years old, just turned 59, and I've been told, don't you ever rest? Don't you ever take a day off? It's like, my day off doesn't mean that I'm off from everything. My day off just means that I'm doing other things instead. You know, I might be working around the house or whatever. Do I do a little listing every day? Pretty much every day. Not always, but pretty much every day. But I'm working on my business and working in my business pretty much every day. I don't, I don't know any other way to do it, you know? And it's because I have a hustle mentality. And it's something that some people are born with. Some people gain as they enter business. Some people ramp it way up. Some people slide it right back. You know, it just kind of depends on what you do with your days and your time and whether you've always got something in the pipeline or you're always dreaming dreams or you're always saying, how am I going to make a better mousetrap? I've always had that mentality and it has benefited me because there have been so many times that I have been to the very end of the road and hanging on to that knot at the end and that knot was my next big idea. My next thing is like, well, if I can't do this anymore, I didn't sit there and look longingly at the door was shut. that was shut. I started looking at the window that was open. And that's what I encourage you to do. I'm talking to myself as well as anybody else. I need a pep squad sometimes. And sometimes you have to be your own pep squad. You have to say, okay, well, eBay is not selling on there. You know what? I'm going to cross post it to Etsy and we're going to see if it sells over there. We're not going to take it off of eBay. We're not going to say eBay is dead. We're just going to say eBay is being lazy. I just don't, I don't say that eBay is dead. If I say my sales are dead, I, I don't say that the platform is dead. There are a lot of ups and downs. There are a lot of glitches there. There are a lot of things, you know, that we have to deal with. But that's just being, well, that's the cost of doing business. That's being a, a business owner. You can either step up and man up, or you can just lay it down. And there's a lot of people that do lay it down because they think that their time is better spent somewhere else just because that's dead. That's not a good reason to move somewhere else. You want to move somewhere else because you're trying to up your game. You're trying to be more efficient with your time or work smarter. Um, if people leave eBay, it needs to be for the reason that, that that was my vibe, that was what I was doing in that day, and now I'm going to move on to something else that's going to make my business better, and it's going to make me a better person and a better business person, and I'll be able to work less hours and make more money. That should be the idea in being a business owner. Because I married, uh, I married at the age of 19. I wanted to stay at home. I didn't want to work in the bakery anymore, and after a few months, I quit the bakery. But it wasn't before I had started teaching myself how to do handcrafts. It was all kinds of stuff. I mean, macrame, it was just everything under the sun. Anything that I could make money, and then I would put it in a Coke box at the time, you know, the wooden Coke boxes weren't all the rage, you know, it was just like that was what Coke came in. I would put it in a Coke box and I would put a sign on the outside of it and I would get my mom to take it up to her work. And those ladies would buy those things like crazy. If I could sell things for three or four dollars, I was so excited because to me, I had people donating yarn to me and craft supplies from their, their projects that they weren't doing anything with. 
So these people were bringing me things. The ladies were bringing me things because they knew that I was trying to make money. And then I was turning it into a project and then I was reselling it back to these same ladies. So that kind of has been, you know, the, the mentality that I've had about how can I, how can I sell it twice? I don't just want to sell something once. I want to sell it twice if I can, you know, going and coming. Uh, there's a lot of times that, you know, I'll buy something from an estate sale and, and resell it later and I'll end up selling it to somebody that actually is part of the estate sale. I mean, it's just unreal, you know, how often these things happen because I've done some work to something. I did that for a while and then while I was still doing that, I was overlapping it. I'm a journalism major and I started doing some freelance writing for Memphis Magazine and I started actually making some money doing that. It wasn't real big money or anything like that, but in the day it was good money. This was back in the early 80s was when my child was first born. She was born in 81, the only child that I've got. And so I could do that at home. I could do the handicrafts at home. Handicrafts were going one direction. The freelance writing was going in the other direction. I did some interviews and different things like that. And I'd come up with a $75 check, you know, every once in a while. And that was, that was really good money in the first of, of the uh, marriage there. You know, it, it helped pay for some baby formula and things like that, and it kind of offset that. Well, I had those two things going. Well, kind of the crafts kind of petered out a little bit. The freelance writing kind of ramped up, and then I wanted, I've always been one to kind of gather things, you know, as far as experiences and uh, skills and talents and things like that. I've always been one that tried a lot of different things. Well, I went to a calligraphy class, and I enjoyed it. Um, I loved the Victorian era and things, and it kind of reminded me of that, you know, being able to do those type of things. And I got to know one of the uh, calligraphers that I took a class from. I got to know her pretty well, and so I ended up doing an interview on her for Memphis Magazine. And it got picked up by a couple other places, and I got paid a couple of different places. But I started thinking about it, and I thought, man, she makes money doing this. How does she make money doing that? How could I make money doing that? And so the kind of the crafts had gone away, but kind of the calligraphy kind of slid in there, and the freelance was kind of my main thing, and the calligraphy was my uh, side job or side hustle or whatever you want to call it. And I started doing uh, on-demand type of things, custom work for people. It wasn't anything dramatic. It was just some of these small note cards. Um, I did handmade baby uh, invitations. You know, if somebody wanted baby shower invitations in the day, we didn't send them by phone. I'm sorry, it's so loud. The, the car is loud today because I've got to run this air full out. We've got almost 100 degrees here today, <laughs> so, uh, and the road is loud. But I started doing those and learning that I actually had a talent for reproducing uh, free line drawings and stuff as well because it kind of ramped that up a little bit. I could do little, you know, baby feet or, you know, things like that, uh, crosses, you know, just different things like that, but make them kind of Victorian looking. And so I sold a lot of those type of things. I sold packs of hand done uh, invitations and they were all the calligraphy and things. Well, one lady at one of the baby showers saw that I did that found out that those were all hand done and that I was uh, she was given my number and that type of thing and she actually worked in the school system and she was in charge of all of the honor society certificates and things like that and then they had the presidential awards that were done and they would send certificates to a certain group of the children I forget if it was through Spotlight, kind of the special um, intelligence, you know, division of the school system or whatever it was. But anyway, the short story was that I started doing the calligraphy on these. And of course, these were onesies. I mean, they would send you one for one child. You know, you wouldn't, wouldn't be able to mess up. So I had to really focus my time and attention on that. So some of my freelance writing kind of went to the side of the calligraphy became something that I did all the time. During that period of time, I'm a very uh, organized person, and so I started uh, doing some professional organizing for some people through a chain of events. They found out that I was very organized, a very good housekeeper, and things like that, um, because I was home and I was able to do those kind of things, and so I started teaching young women in my church how to do those type of things. 
learned how to do it because they didn't want to, you know, go, go through with it and do it. So I started doing that. And um, I joined NAPO, was the National Association of Professional Organizers. So freelance writing, that really is my first love. I love, love to write and I would love to be a full-time writer.
that. I was basically a, a figurehead by that point. And um, it's an interesting journey that I won't bore you with in this video because this will be plenty long enough, I'm quite sure. Um, but by the time that I decided to sell that company and get out of that industry, I had started doing some estate
estates, but I would buy out certain items, which is what I started doing. I had never sold on eBay. I had always, or online at all, really, other than just through my thrift shop, letting people know I had things. I had built my own Facebook page up to almost 5,000 followers, where it is today. It's around 5,000. And I do uh, sell through there. And so where I am today, shooting forward to today, I've done a lot of different things, but I've also overlapped again, and I've gone back into writing some. I'm working on a book, a couple of books actually, but one primarily that I would like to get out by the end of the year, an e-book, and it's just an inspirational one. I've got a couple ideas for some things that are going to be reselling related. I've had people that have, I'm sorry, I've got to turn, lots of traffic, so I might have to be rude here for a minute. Um, I've also got, it's a bad turn there, I have to be careful, <laughs> almost home. I've got a couple of ideas for different things, uh, like some webinars and things like that. I've got people that started contacting me. That's one thing that I want to say. When people start asking you about certain things that you do, that means that they are probably usually willing to pay to find out. And I learned that a long, long time ago. They would ask me questions about my cleaning business, and I started selling my forms and things because I had it very regimented. I had certain forms that each of the cleaning techs had to fill out when they were on the job duty. They had to get it written off by the group manager when she did the checklist, you know, on the job being done. I had, I had forms for everything. And I still have forms for everything because when I sold my business, I didn't sell any of the intellectual material. I just sold my customer list. So I can start a business tomorrow if I want to. I still have that name as trademarked. And, you know, I did all of that. I knew to do that and all of my forms and anything indicative of the intellectual material name, anything that has to do with Help Me Rhonda, I can I can sell online, I can do it into business forms, whatever. And that was part of my pipeline and it's still in my pipeline. It's still there. I can just tap into it anytime I want to. I can start a cleaning business again if I want to and scale it to whatever I want it to be. And I can do that in conjunction with estates or whatever I want to do at this point in time. That comes from having that mentality that that car had. I never said that I didn't fuss and complain or shrug or say, oh my gosh, what am I going to do about any of my businesses? And you will never hear me say that. There's times that I got extremely frustrated with what was going on or what was not going on more than anything. I'm a good problem solver. I can usually do the, oh my goodness, and then do something about it. I'm a person having a crisis. I am that person. But I never pinned my hopes, desires, dreams, all of my finances, all of my mental capabilities, all of my business acumen, anything else. I never everything on one thing and I would encourage you to have the mentality of that car <laughs> be willing to do anything whatever it takes but right now eBay is slow it's not dead but it is slow I'm still making sales but I have ramped up I looked at it and I went, okay, well, it's slow there. We're going to throw it on Marketplace. I am selling the booty off of Marketplace. Almost everything I put on there sells pretty quickly right now. Offer up used to be hot, hot, hot here, and it's not right now. So I don't, I just don't waste my time putting it on offer up as often. That doesn't mean I take it completely off. That doesn't mean I take all of my listings off of eBay and put them on Etsy. It means that I overlap that. I keep the pipeline going. The pipeline always has more than one thing in it. You never have one thing in your pipeline. You've got to have a lot of different things in your pipeline. And then you'll see it 
shoot off in one direction or shoot off in another and then you'll know to come back or scale back on this and ramp up this you go where the money is and you go where you want to spend your time the most you won't always be able to do what you want to do but let me tell you something whether it's this or whether it's relationships or anything else i've always told people you might not like your options but you've always got options so you need to plan on what you want your car to say i hope everybody has a great day get in there evaluate your business a little bit kind of see what you think you need to be doing i'm at the point that i have made myself unemployable and i would encourage you to do the same happy junkin <laughs>